First thing we're going to talk about is moon phases. Here's the Earth. The Earth has an equator. The Earth also rotates. That means spin. It spins one revolution about every 24 hours. We call that a day. The Earth rotates around something called its axis. That's like a line that goes through the center. The Earth's axis is tilted at about 23 and a half degrees away from straight up and down. All right, so the Earth has one moon, unlike most planets in our solar system. If we zoom out a little bit, we can see it. Uh, the moon orbits the Earth in kind of an elliptical shape, so not quite a perfect circle, but it makes a complete orbit around the Earth about every 29 and a half days, and we call that a lunar month or a lunar cycle. And depending where the moon is on that lunar cycle is what gives us the moon phases or phases of the moon. So if we zoom out just a little bit more, uh, we see the sun, moon, and earth. This is not to scale or even close, by the way. And depending on where the moon is around its orbit and where the sun is, the earth sees different amounts of sunlight on the moon. So to understand the moon phases, you have to imagine how sunlight hits the earth. So sunlight travels this way. We're going to start with the moon right here in this position. And moon phases are according to what we see from Earth. So we're always going to be the point of view from Earth. So that's like somebody looking from Earth, and there's our line of sight. In this position, the opposite side of the moon has light. The side of the moon that we see has no light. We call this a new moon. That's where we see a totally dark moon. When the moon moves to here, you can imagine again, half of the moon is lit up, okay, and we only see half of that light. We would call this the first quarter moon. We call it a quarter moon because it's a quarter of the way around its orbit. When the moon gets on the opposite side of the earth from the sun, uh, the moon is actually a little bit above the earth so we see all the light of the sun. We call that a full moon. When the earth comes around here, again we see half of the light and we call that a third quarter moon. So here's our new moon, first quarter, full moon, third quarter. So if you watch the moon through a complete cycle, the first half, the moon is actually getting brighter each night till it gets to a full moon, and then the moon is getting dimmer. The bottom part we call a waxing phase. That means the moon is getting brighter. Okay, you can see that each stage as the moon moves around the Earth, a little bit more is illuminated, a little bit more till we get a full moon. It's fully illuminated. The waning stage is where the moon is getting dimmer. So each night, the moon is getting more and more shadow cast on it until we get back to the new moon and it's completely shaded. Alright, so quick review. We have one half of the moon phase where it's getting brighter. We call that our waxing phase. Our waning phase is when the moon is getting darker each night. We also have shapes of the moon we call crescent. That's where only a small part portion, less than half the moon is illuminated, or gibbous where over half of the moon is illuminated. And keep in mind we always call the moon crescent or gibbous according to what we see from Earth. So even though one half of the moon is always getting sunlight, we only see a portion of that. We only see the same side of the moon all the time and depending where it is around the Earth it's getting more or less sunlight. So we see the same part of the moon but as the moon orbits the Earth more or less of that part of the moon that we see gets sunlight and that's what we call our moon phases. Okay so we're going to change our perspective here just a little bit. Uh, we're going to get rid of our moon stuff and we're going to look at seasons. So we talked about earlier that the earth is tilted slightly on its axis, about 23 and a half degrees. And the earth is always getting hit by sunlight. But because it's tilted, different parts of the earth get more or less sunlight throughout the year. Kind of like we talked about in the moon phases. So right now, because the earth's tilt, we see that all the direct sunlight is on that half of the Earth, and for the most part, the southern hemisphere is getting more direct sunlight. So as the Earth rotates there, the southern hemisphere is going to get a lot of direct sunlight. We would call that summertime in the southern hemisphere. Now, as the Earth rotates the sun, it stays at that same tilt, 23 and a half degrees. So throughout the year, different parts, northern and southern hemisphere, get different amounts of direct sunlight. So on this part of the Earth's orbit, if we zoom in and we look at the sunlight hitting the Earth, we see that instead of the southern hemisphere getting more direct sunlight, 
Right now, the northern hemisphere is getting a lot more direct sunlight, so we would call this summertime in the northern hemisphere this time. All right, so we'll zoom back out here and we'll look at summer and winter time. So as the Earth orbits the sun, different amounts of it get more or less direct sunlight. So over here, where the southern part of the Earth is getting more sunlight, we call it summer in the south, winter in the north. When it's summer in the northern hemisphere, it's winter in the southern hemisphere. And in between those two points, the Earth's north and south hemisphere are getting about the same amount of sunlight. So we call that spring or fall. Those are our transition periods. Okay, in review, the Earth is tilted. The Earth orbits the sun, it takes 365 days to make one revolution around the sun. Alright, because the Earth is tilted, our hemispheres are unequally heated. If there's more direct sunlight on a hemisphere, we call that summer. And on the opposite hemisphere, that's winter because they're getting less sunlight. Halfway through the orbit, we call that spring or fall when the Earth is getting about the same amount of sunlight. It's important to remember, it's a common misconception. The Earth does not get closer or farther from the Sun in the summer or winter. In this orbit, it looks a little bit like that because of the way I'm orbiting, but the Earth makes pretty close to a circular orbit, and the distance from the Sun does not determine summer or winter. How much direct sunlight a hemisphere is getting is what tells us if it's going to be summer or winter. Okay, the last thing I'm going to review, we're going to uh, zoom in a little bit here and we're going to talk about eclipses. So in this case, we see the Earth, Moon, and Sun are lined up. Uh, on certain parts of the Moon's orbit, it lines up directly with the Earth and the Sun. Usually it's a little bit above or below, but sometimes we get what's called a solar eclipse. And that's when the Moon blocks out a little portion of the Sun. My Moon moved a little bit out of the line there. Uh, but we call this the path of totality. If and only if you're in that little circle, you cannot see the sun. The moon completely blocks out the sun's corona. Okay, so solar eclipse means we cannot see the sun, and it happens because the moon is in between the earth and the sun. Now the opposite can also happen where the moon is on the opposite side of the earth, and certain times on the moon's orbit, its light will completely be blocked out by the earth. So if the sun is shining sunlight this way, you can see where the moon is positioned, the earth can actually block the moon's sunlight. Now the moon doesn't go totally dark, it actually turns kind of red um, because of the amount of light and how it bends around our atmosphere and things like that. But during a lunar eclipse we cannot see the moon the same way. The moon actually turns a little bit red, but a lunar eclipse happens when the Earth is blocking sunlight from the moon.